Hi everyone, you're watching Behind the Sidelines, your one-stop shop for understanding the forces at play behind the sports you watch. I'm Lee Pacquia. And I'm Steve Olenek, and today we've got a very special guest, Kyle Harrington of Harrington Capital Management. We're talking uh, the Los Angeles Clippers today and Steve Ballmer. Uh, kind of, right. you know, we, we know that you played basketball at Princeton. Just wanted to get your perspective on what do you, what do you think happened there? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, the, it's a very interesting situation the way that the franchise was forced into liquidation out of the hands of Donald Sterling. That's kind of effectively what happened, right? It is. They'd I like mean, to couch it you know, another way, but right. It's I mean, liquidation. the NBA bylaws based on Donald Sterling's behavior, uh, which let's you know agree on that it was egregious. The things that were said um, basically forced him to sell the team, and I think that that was outla outlined in the NBA bylaws. What he did was not against the law um, in the United States, but I think that um, the NBA bylaws outlined that he violated certain rules and regulations. Therefore, he can no longer be owner of the team. Mm -hmm. So Steve Ballmer comes in. He's the former CEO of Microsoft. Uh, he has a lot of ties with the city that uh, quite infamously lost an NBA team. Do you think there is any chance that he might look at the LA Clippers and say, you know what? I'd like to move this to Seattle and put an NBA franchise and have it be the only game in town in I think terms that of basketball. I think that's clearly crossed his mind and his advisor's mind in terms of how they're going to strategically run this. I think the price tag, by the way, that was uh, you know, put across, not that it necessarily matters to Steve Ballmer, but I think it was a very high price that he uh, wound up buying the team for. Now, keep in mind also, let's not feel that sorry for Donald Sterling. He paid $12 million for that team in turnaround. San Diego, so yeah. $12 million. So I think the only thing he's got to worry about is his capital gains tax on this, uh, on this franchise. Let me ask you, yeah. you have a lot of influential clients. Yes. Would you recommend purchasing a professional team? I think, you know, it all comes down to price. I think that the environment for sports professionally in the United States has always been fantastic. I mean, I'm a huge fan, whether it be baseball, basketball, football. Soccer's made some inroads into this country as we just, you know, witnessed the World Cup uh, and America doing pretty well in, 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 in that arena. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think that there's profit of, certainly profitability uh, in this sports world. It just comes down to, you know, what's the valuation? What, How what do you value you, it? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's where I, yeah, because I, I look at these things and, you know, is owning a professional sports team from a financial stand, sound standpoint a sound investment, or how much does vanity play into this? I think vanity plays a lot bigger of a role in it than sound investment. Um, it is, I would not call it a risk-averse investment. It certainly has uh, risk associated with it, especially when you, for example, go to Yankee Stadium and you're paying $15 for a bottle of beer or whatever the price. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that sustainable for a modern American family? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's arguments that it's not. And so sound business investment, uncertain, but certainly um, uh, something that from a vanity perspective, a lot of people are, are interested in. Would you overpay for a team? A lot of people do. I think, I think, I think that uh, Bomber overpaid for the Clippers. Mm -hmm. Just, I happen to be a pretty uh, value-oriented investor in general. Uh, I don't know if it's Warren Buffett-esque, but it's certainly a little bit more, um, less conservative than Warren Buffett. But I, I think he overpaid for the team. I don't know how necessarily, uh, and I think, by the way, he, let's face it, he had the sterling on the ropes with respect to valuation in some sense. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the first price tag, you know, was, you know, multi-billion dollars. So uh, vanity, I think, played into this. Yeah. Um, so hypothetically, if you had clients that wanted to place capital um, in an ownership stake in a professional sports franchise in the United States, what sport would you pick and why? I'm biased, right? Because <laughs> Steve <laughs> outlined, I, I played basketball at Princeton, so I'm a huge uh, NBA basketball uh -huh. fan. Is that where the best value is? Um, you know, Steve and I were talking offline. I, I, allegedly, it's it's not. It's it's in the NFL, um, which I think it's in the NFL or Major League Baseball and or, or professional basketball. Those are the three arenas that you know America's always apple pie, baseball, right, mm -hmm. and uh, football or basketball. I think those are the three sports. Um, interestingly enough, while I played basketball at Princeton and I love the sport, I like watching NFL football. I think that is a, you know, it's, it's made for television. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think with the NFL, I mean, I think it's, uh, 
you know, I think the teams are valued so high mm -hmm. that I think if you can buy in, it's it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. No one wants to say MLS. You can buy a team for, I think, a, a sandwich and a cup of coffee. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just see, I see everyone talking about the MLS. These games, yeah. I mean, they have more and more people on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on TV more and more often. Right. Um, I'm surprised to hear none of you say, uh, I want to put some money into soccer. I guess they have farther to go. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I think so. I think there's, a, you know, although, like, you know, with respect to soccer, uh, I happened, to, it's interesting, I never grew up being a huge soccer fan. This last World Cup got me interested. I actually tuned in a lot uh, to, you know, I, maybe because, you know, the United States was doing well, but uh, I really enjoyed watching the World Cup, so. I think if you could get the big transfer fees, it's very lucrative with some of these players. What needs to happen for that? I think the MLS will probably have to uh, kind of align with some of these teams overseas and kind of get a pipeline going so I that they can get yeah something like that. No, they just got one. Um, a team in India signed a partnership deal with Fiorentina in Serie A in Italy. Oh wow! And uh, there's talk of some big Italian players going and playing in Italy, which has no professional soccer, you know, system set up at all. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Kyle, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, very appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks, Kyle. Steve. That's Kyle Harrington from Harrington Capital Management. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out on YouTube, and you can always follow us on Twitter. You can also find us at mimesiswebtv.com. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.